So thanks for coming, everyone. So today we're going to have a, a info session about the, some like paths you could take as an EMT, rock med, or CNA. Uh, we're going to go in order of EMT, rock med, CNA because one of our presenters for CNA is taking a midterm right now. He'll be back later. Well, so um, this oh, is. I'm Nick. I'm the current uh, career chair along with uh, Jan. He's a. Uh, you organize this event? Uh, my name is David. I'm the president of MSNS. Um, I just want to say thank you everyone for coming today. Um, definitely, I encourage, if you guys have any questions, anything, just feel free to ask. Um, the presenters that we have today, they are very knowledgeable at the field that they're in. Um, so feel free to ask questions. And as you guys probably tell, we are recording this um, just for people's resource like after the informational um, event so if you guys want to go back on the video or forgot something then we'll be posting the video on YouTube and we'll send a link out to OrgSync so you guys can like see what's up so all right um, first thing we have um, we're going to be talking about EMT so hi I'm away. Joseph uh, I'm an EMT and nursing student um, I was an EMT off campus uh, for Falcon Ambulance for two years. Transitioned over to working for an allergy company, uh, doing medications, mixing medications, doing oral, imm oral immunotherapy as well. Um, I'm in between working on campus too, but I've got too much stuff going on. I'm Sammy. Um, I'm EMT as well, and then a sophomore to nursing major. Yeah. And I mostly just like work as an EMT. So I'm going to kind of talk about like the process of becoming an EMT. Um, so you f the first thing you need to do, the first thing you need to do is take a class. So what I did was I took the class here. Um, we offer in the fall and spring semesters for a whole semester. So it's like 15 weeks. Or we also have like a summer class that's six weeks accelerated. Um, and if you take it during like the spring or fall semester, it's included in your tuition. It is four credits though, um, but you can also take it like pass fail. And I know a lot of people as well who have taken it at like community colleges that are close to them because it's like really convenient. Um, so yeah, and then the price kind of varies if you take it over the summer. And yeah, so this is just like, um, the website that we have, like the EMT program, and some pictures for, like from the class and stuff. And the class is pretty difficult, but it was like also my favorite class that I've taken here as well. So um, definitely really fun. You do a lot of like scenario-based learning, and I think it's really beneficial for nursing as well, especially since the professor, she's a nurse, um, and so she adds in a lot of like nursing stuff, which is just good for y'all, but maybe not for like other people. <laughs> but yeah. And then so after you finish the class, that allows you to sit for the national exam, which is called like the national registry. Um, and so for the, for the national registry, it's pretty much just a written part because you get all of your skills done during the class. So it's really nice. It's like not a lot of stress um, because you're not having to do like the skills testing. It's just the written exam. Um, and so you take the written exam and then once you get certified nationally, you have to get your state license, which is just a matter of like paying money and um, applying for it and stuff. But you're pretty much guaranteed that as long as you have your, your national exam. And so like to apply for the state you pretty much apply with your county that you're in it could be any county and then so i just applied where i'm from like the east bay like contra costa county but i call, could also have done it with san francisco county and that would have given me the state license the california state license i'm alameda and once you work or once you go to that county it doesn't mean you can't work in other counties they have certain stipulations and rules with that but like I was able to work from Alameda to Contra Casa in Marin, come into SF. There's different rules with that, if you have any questions on that. Yeah, and then also for the state license, it's just you have to do fingerprinting and then like a background check, so. And 
and something about the um, the national um, testing that allows you to be an EMT everywhere within the nation. So you want to keep that up. Um, it's usually, I believe, $80 um, fee every two years. But if you do let that lapse and you just want to keep working in California, you can go ahead and pay the California fees and continue working as an EMT in California. And I believe to get re recertified, you do have to get CEs. Yeah. yeah, you always have to get your CEs whenever you're in the medical field. Um, if you lapse over by six months, I believe it's 36 hours worth of CEs. If you lapse over a year, it's skills check off, it's, um, what is it, 36 hours and a bunch of other stuff and the price goes up as well. What's a CE? Um, CE or is uh, continuing, continuing education. So anything that deals with uh, science, health, uh, you could use that. Mm -hmm. If you have any classes within school, nursing classes, you can use that as well. And then, so just talking like about a few opportunities that you can um, have like once you become an EMT. So we have like uh, EMRS, which is like EMTs on campus. And so for that, we pretty much work like Thursday, uh, three to midnight, and then Friday and Saturday from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, and we're also trying to expand like more during the week as well and you're gonna be working with like one other person um, and you're just gonna pre be pretty much on call until uh, you get a call or, or something. And then we also work like um, sports games, so like soccer games, rugby games, and stuff like that. Also like Donnaroo and Don's Night Out, which are pretty fun. And then um, like the outside ambulance companies, and then Joseph can talk about that, and then like Rock Med, which will be talked about as well later. Outside companies, um, wow, you can work anywhere from an eight hour shift that usually carries over to 10 hours. Uh, you can work 12 hour shifts that'll carry over over time. Um, I've worked eight hour shifts that carry over to 24 hours. Um, my normal shifts were 24, then an eight, then a 24, then an eight, then weekends I worked whatever I could pick up. So there's always hours to pick up if you want to make extra money, especially during summer. Um, there's a lot of companies out here that will hire you. Um, it's going to be real basic once you have all your stuff taken care of. Uh, you, they're going to put you with a field training officer. That training officer is going to give you a rundown on how to do everything. Then the next time you do it, um, they're pretty much just going to test you. It's real basic stuff that you're going to learn. And you, you kind of learn on the job too because you have someone that is very experienced and guiding you along the way. Um, I've done, on ambulance, I've done what's called bari bariatric, where pretty much they just need extra lift, um, an extra lift team to go in and help. I've done long haul transfers from Alameda all the way to Eureka. Um, that took like 12 hours just to get the patient up there. And then we just cruised on back, going really slow. Um, Overnight calls, you can get upgraded very easily. Um, you do a lot of um, what we call transfers, pretty much. Someone in a hospital um, is getting discharged, but nobody's gonna just put them into a taxi cab. They wanna make sure they get there safely. They call an ambulance. Uh, you do a lot of dialysis transfers from uh, like SNFs, skilled nursing facilities. Uh, once in a while you will get those uh, rare code twos where you go in for an accident, gunshot wound, uh, but it depends on what company you're working with. A question. So, so, in regards to, I guess, EMT, like, what are the benefits of you being an EMT, you guys being an EMT, and the benefits of that also being a nursing student as well? Um, I definitely think uh, EMT is good because you you get a lot of patient contact so if you're looking for more than like one day of clinical a week I would highly recommend like um, EMT or even like rock red which will be talked about later um, but if you are thinking about possibly like going into ER I think it's really cool to see kind of that transfer of care going on where you're pre-hospital and then um, like for nursing because I think it's important to know kind of both sides um, wow, you get a lot of exposure because 
while you're doing it on campus, you're dealing with one kind of people. You're usually doing, dealing with students. Um, as an EMT, I've worked, well, from the rich areas in Marin to lower Oakland to the Iron Triangle in Richmond um, to San Pablo. So I've seen very, very diverse cultures and you, you actually get to work with those cultures because you want to learn how to talk to those people. You know, when you're a nurse, you're going to be doing that very, very often. You know, that actually helps. And then it's also nice to have refreshers because EMT teaches you kind of the basic stuff you're going to learn as nurses. But you're always going to keep using it. So that also helps. Any other questions before I move on? So if you do come with a question, we'll have, uh, if you do have a question, you can save it, or we'll also have a Q&A at the end, so you can ask it later. So next we're gonna have Brock and up. So thank you to the EMT. I'm Maya. Um, I am a senior two nursing major. Um, David's a senior two as well. Um, so yeah, I guess we can just dive yep. right in. So what is RockMed? Um, RockMed is a Bay Area based organization and basically what they do is they operate the medical tents of concert venues from Bill Grands to come on in, Raul. <laughs> um, we operate medical tents from like Bill Grands to like Oracle or all these concert venues all over the Bay Area. And sporting events. Sporting too. events too. But like Levi's, um, we do 49ers games a lot. Um, so anything in the entertainment industry. So it's kind of get like twist from everything. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we'll go straight into it. How do you apply? Um, so you actually go, it's actually a pretty simple process. You go to rockmed.org, I believe is what yep. it is. Or you can just search rock medicine. Um, and it's basically an application as to how you would apply for like a job. Like they ask for work experience, volunteer experience, um, education background. Um, if you have references, not necessarily like a letter of recommendation, just like um, like like if, if you worked at the LRC, you could put like Dory's name and phone number and obviously ask her, but you know, like that kind of thing. Um, not necessarily like a physical letter. Um, you have to be CPR certified mm -hmm. and you have to have at least one year of nursing experience if you're nursing or EMT. There's a lot of different options. There's nursing options, there's EMT options, there's medical options if you're going the MD route. Um, yeah, I think you do have to have healthcare background. Though. Yeah, I mean, it, the very minimum, um, they'll accept people you have CPR or BLS. Um, but again, in Rockman, you not you don't only just work with people who have BLS, but you also work with other RNs to MD, to physician, to physician assistant. They get a very large collective um, health profession individuals who voluntarily come out to these events, and that's something I want to point out. It, this is a volunteering event. You don't get paid to do it, but um, Maya and I will emphasize that the experience that you do get through Rock Med is very invaluable, and you do learn a lot, for sure. So It's it's an interesting environment, too, because, I mean, you're not on the streets as you would be as, like, an EMT. Um, you're at a sporting event mm -hmm. or a concert, so you deal with, like, a very slim population I guess you could say it's a lot of people that you know either fall down because they get pushed or they're too intoxicated or they're too intoxicated on drugs mm -hmm. um, so it's a very small population you're not really dealing with gunshot wounds unless you know something like that happens but um, it's a very small group of people which is kind of cool but um, you do get a lot of experience mm -hmm. um, you know going off of what she said, yes you do get, the experiences that you should, you get is definitely like, yes the population of people that you kind of interact with is very specific, but what I like about RockMed is that you do experience 
patient interaction, but also you you connect with other healthcare profession prof, uh, professions professionals such as RNs to MDs, and I guess applying the fact that we are all nursing students, I'm assuming, um, it they really do take consideration that if you are an RN student, they will look at that and they'll actually take the time to help you develop as a nursing student. So for example, um, one place that I volunteer a lot is Bill Grants. Um, and I do a lot of the rave events where it gets pretty hectic. And um, I remember there was this one RN that I built a really good rapport with. He definitely helps me out. Um, he teaches me all the little details about working in this med tent. And, and he's a triage nurse too. So he obviously knows what he's doing. I'm mean, very, very skilled as being, being an RN. And um, they're very, very susceptible to teaching you um, not just what's going on in there, but how you, they can teach you how to apply what's going on in here, in there, with being an RN in general. It definitely has an ED sort of vibe where um, it's very unpredictable. Um, you know, we would, I mean, we'll give like a, like example of what usually go on during it, during like an event. So if you decide to work in the clinic, you know, you stay in the clinic, and there's people who are actually circulating who are also part of Rock Med. Those are usually the EMT. Those are usually the EMT, the people who are usually CPR certified. They usually wander around during the concert venue. Throughout the concert, they see, like, are people okay? Um, more often than not, especially during a rave event, there are going to be people who are very intoxicated or they probably taken one too many drugs that they should be taking and as a result you know we usually get a walkie-talkie call in where it's like we get head up heads up hey we have a male coming in uh, ETOH or whatever the case is and we kind of like prepare for it so yeah it's not directly as severe as you know like patient coming in with like a gunshot wound but you definitely get the same kind of thrill and kind of like that feeling you would do you would get if you are in such an emergency situation type and that's like kind of like the biggest thing and they you know they have everything like they have all like medical equipments and stuff they like s some cases some patients become very hypotensive we do check vital signs whenever people come in you know um hello um we do check vital signs and we do check blo um, blood sugar we do and in some cases, some patients, they can be very high intensive with the alcohol and as a result, we sometimes have to start IVs and give them bowls of fluid. So I definitely um, had exposure practicing all of that and um, I would definitely recommend it. Plus, you get to go free concert. So yeah, that's a cool, cool thing too. And um, the shifts vary depending on what event you're going to. So like if you go to a 49ers game, mm -hmm. you're probably going to have to get there around 11 if the game is at night um, or maybe 1. Um, if you go to a concert, like at Bill Graham, it's probably going to be around 6 that you have to get there and you'll be there until it's um, over. Uh, so it just kind of depends on if you're looking for like an all day thing or half a day evening. Um, so that is really nice. and. There is a lot of options. There's probably at least one event every day, if not more. Um, so it's really cool. And they don't have a lot of volunteers right now. They are looking for more, I know, because every single time I look at the calendar, it's never full. Um, they also do options like they do go to um, Snow Globe and they do go to Bottle Rock, like those big events. Outside um, lands. Outside lands, yeah. So, it's kind of cool, like, yeah, you get your experience as being a nurse or whatever you are trying to be while going to a free concert and having fun. Like, at Snow Globe, if you are, like, a really good volunteer, like, they literally put you up in a house and give you food and feed you and transportation while you volunteer and get to see the concert. So it's pretty fun. Um, and I've been doing it for two years now. He's been longer because he actually told me about it. Um, but it's really good it's definitely like david said like an ed type of vibe um but i mean i like an ed type of vibe so it's a good thing yeah. it's, um, it's, it's i mean like 
I guess we mentioned outside when we mentioned some of the like for some other events I went to um, I went to Port Robinson helped out with that I went to chance a concert on to Nas one time when she when he came over i um, literally every single event you can think of around the Bay Area there's always going to be like they're always going to be needing like rock med because we are in charge of the medical tent like straight up and the exposure is great um, free concert again oh and also I've noticed with my applying to jobs um, there's a couple applications that um, literally have asked have you volunteered for over a year like with a specific mm -hmm. organization rock Med's a good it's rock a good reference that, for the you don't get paid. I've been volunteering with it for over a year, mm -hmm. and it's definitely good to put down as like I've had a consistent amount of experience with a consistent group. Um, so some applications will actually ask you those kinds of questions. And so. they do they do really like nursing students. Um, like when they when you when they get the roster out, your name if you're a nursing student, they'll actually classify you as a student nurse. And again, like they really emphasize on the teaching aspect of everything like there's one charge nurse she helped me out was like helping me out like she came up to me one one of the concert and she was like okay what do you want to learn today and I told her like I want to learn this this and this and she made sure that I learned it by ends of the night um, you make really good rapport with people if you show up pretty often um, I met some nurses who actually graduated from USF who taught me a lot during my time over there um, it can get a little stinky sometimes because if you're not really used to like vomiting or yeah, anything like that. Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of those. Um, you know, and there's cases where people, unfortunately, there are a lot of people who um, maybe take one too many drugs or something. And um, I remember I had one um, person come in and he was, he was complaining of like severe chest pain. And what do we have to do? We start an EKG on. We have all of that in the rock med, and you know, it kind of associated with association with the EMT. We do work with the EMT as well. They're like going around, um, picking people up. Um, you just you just meet a lot of uh, professionals in that field, and it's such a great opportunity. I cannot emphasize the I guess the benefits of rock med. So. If you guys have more questions about it, then definitely feel free to ask us after. But or if you have any pressing ones right now. Yeah. What's up? So you said that uh, for the application process, they asked for like what kind of experience you have. Would like clinicals count mm -hmm. as that, and that's what you would put? Yeah. So like there, in the application process, you're going to ask like information about like your degree, or do you have any certification, and yes, they ask you for references. For me, I put down um, Dory over at LRC uh, just because she's our boss and I asked her. Um, I also asked one of my clinical instructors if I could put her at the reference and I'll be honest with you, it can take a bit for them to process your application for whatever reason. Um, when I applied, it took them about I think, two, three weeks for them to get back to me. Um, but what experience too would be like NSA, you NSA, know, you yeah, volunteer exactly. with NSA. Um, yeah, you've done X amount of clinical semesters. Um, if you do EMT, that would be experience and work experience. Um, so there's definitely options. They always need more clinicians than the actual people who walks around the venue because those people like getting those people to walk around the venue are actually there's like a surplus amount of them but there's only few people in the pool of um, Rockman volunteers who are actually um, capable to or it's not capable but licensed to some extent to work in the clinician and because we're actually technically titled SRNs we they see that as a clinician um, um, member who can help with the clinic so and it's pretty cool I mean like I remember I like went into Bill Grand and I was I came in like two hours early and I remember Chance was doing sound check that time and I was like oh shoot he's right there and it's like really cool um, it can get pretty hectic sometimes uh, just because I mean, you never know what's going to happen
happen, just like any other health profession. You never know what the heck is going to happen on a given day, but that's kind of the beauty of um, being involved in such a fast-paced environment. So. Yeah, um, how frequently do you guys volunteer like in a month? And like, is there an amount that you need to do? Like, you question. don't need to have a certain amount. Um, I volunteer depending on like my schedule. So that's the beauty of it is you can volunteer as much or as little as you want. Um, just like whatever works for you. And you can see the schedule months in advance. Like I think they already have events up for September. Mm -hmm. um, and it gets more filled as it gets closer. But um, there isn't a certain amount, like you don't have to do like 20 hours, and if you don't, you're inactive, not at all. Um, just as much or as little as you want, um, and you can sign up according to your schedule. Just the only thing, you got, you just got to make sure, obviously, if your BLS expires and make sure you re renew it um, in the given time frame, and if they, you don't, then they'll actually like um, temporarily lock your account until you update your BLS. and. You know, I remember like one of the nurses who I follow a lot, he actually started doing Rockman when he was a nursing student in San Jose State and he said that when when he became an actual RN, they like freaking loved him and they he gave him the RN license and um, he he enjoyed it a lot and um, he's pretty cool about it. It's pretty chill. Um, so that answer your question? Yeah. Did you have a question? Oh it was just oh, okay. for sure. Any other questions? Is there anything more in the PowerPoint? No. All right, Michelle. So, if you have any more questions, let us know. Um, Thanks so, for listening. But, CNAs. This one's a pretty biggie, so. Hi, guys. Thank you for being here. Hello. I'm Jan. I am a um, junior one nursing student. Um, I'm also a CNA at Bristol Packard. I've been there for about three years now, and I also have experience working in um, SNPs and home health cares. I'm Abby. I'm a junior one as well. Um, I just got my CNA certificate. I just got a CNA job. I haven't started it yet, though, but I'll be able to share some info about the process of getting your certificate. Okay. I'll just go off by the question. Why work as a CNA? Okay, I've been a CNA for a really long time, probably I think three, four years now. Um, I got I got my CNA before I got into here, and I think I got my CNA because I wanted to get experience. Specifically, I wanted to get acute experience. That's my one of my main main goals, because I know that if I get into the healthcare system in the hospital, I have more connections and also um, experience based like. I learned, I think it's really good for us, especially with us nurses, to get um, a hands-on experience. Um, and being a CNA is like one of um, the ways that I can do that. And it actually also helps me. It helped me out in being accepted here in the school. This is actually the first school I applied in, and I got in right away. Um, I don't know, I like USF, so I just mm -hmm. jumped on it. I meet a lot, of, I work at Stanford too, at Bolsa Packard. Lots of the nurses, well, many nurses there came from here. That's also like another indicator why I came here. But yeah. Um, why well, I, I want to work as a CNA? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> as a nursing student, I think it's a really great opportunity to kind of go a little deeper in the knowledge that you're gaining, especially going through med surge. And especially after sophomore one, a lot of people say they didn't feel like they gained enough experience and they didn't learn very much. So CNA is a really great opportunity to spend a lot of time caring for patients getting really comfortable talking to them and doing all the ADLs and cleaning and all these things that we're gonna be doing for the rest of our careers as nurses. It's just a great opportunity to get as much hands-on experience as you can. Yeah, yeah um, what kind of CNA jobs are out there? Um, so from my experience, um, there's, there's actually a lot of CNA jobs. The CNAs are very needed in the healthcare field. Um, I know um, CNAs, you can see them in hospitals, you can see them in SNFs. You can also um, work in a home health care setting. And it's actually really great for us students because um, if you work in a health, actually, um, if you work in a health care setting, you can. Um, yeah, so if you want to work in the hospital as a CNA, you can work pretty much in any department. They have CNAs like in regular med surge, ICU, even emergency room even operating room, kind mm -hmm. of. 
because yeah. sometimes they require a CMA certificate. So they're named differently sometimes. Yeah, sometimes um, they're like medical service assistants, MSAs, or patient care assistants, mm -hmm. like in UCSF. Mm -hmm. So, but in the application, it'll say CNA certificate, mm -hmm. preferred or required. Yeah, and for um, for sophomore one, or two, if uh, if you can't get your CNA certificate, and even for freshman ones, you can actually apply to hospitals as a patient care companion. For that, you don't really require to have a CNA certificate. Um, and what it does, it actually, you, you get your foot in the door if you find, if you land a job. And once you're in there, later on, you finish sophomore two, and you can actually get your certificate, talk to your manager, like, hey, I'm a nursing student, can I be, are there any positions to be a CNA? And usually, they like promoting people uh, or hiring within, so, yeah. All right, now we're gonna talk about um, how to get your CNA certificate. Um, here at USF, uh, you are able to, to get your cert CNA certificate after sophomore two. Um, you wanna talk about that? Yeah, so sure. She, did. she just, uh, she just got just her, uh, yeah. Um, so you have to finish a year of nursing school, that's a requirement. Basically, first thing you do is you go to Cowell right here and where all the forms are, you get a form packet and start filling that out. Um, best thing to do is start doing that as soon as you get your grades so that you can just send your transcript in right away. They do require an official transcript. Um, you also are required to do a background check and it will say how you do it. Um, you send all your papers in and then wait a little bit of time and there's a phone number that you can call and that's to check the status of your application. Um, and then eventually it will say that you're cleared for testing and you can go ahead and schedule your tests and then we'll talk about the tests later on as well. And from that point on, you just wait a little longer and then you're set. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward, it just takes a little bit of steps, that's all. I think that's, so this is the form, <laughs> in Cowell Hall. Yeah, always yeah. there. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the testing section of it. This is the form that I got after my application was processed, after I sent everything in. And it says, um, on the left, you'll see the two sites where you can get your testing done. I think Jan and I both did American Red Cross. It's pretty straightforward and simple. I don't know anyone who did the other testing center, um, but they do provide forms for instructions on how to do everything, so. All right, okay, keep going. So, um, so on the test, there's gonna be a written section and a skill section. The written test is pretty straightforward. I don't think that a lot of people have problems with it because it's really down to the basics, like super straightforward knowledge. The skills test does take a little bit of work. I actually failed my first one. Um, they're just really picky about the steps that you do for each skill. And it is basic CNA stuff, but they do look at like whether you wash your hands before you come in, whether you ask the patient like, what do you prefer to be called? <laughs> Which is like stuff that we learn all the time. but. Um, they will like knock you down for little things that aren't significant in your head. So the best thing to do is actually study. There's a bunch of YouTube videos you can look at online. Just look up like CNA skills or CNA test. Um, and just watch those and make sure you get each step in each skill. And yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so like the written test, if you pass HESI fundamentals, I'm 100% certain that you can pass the, um, the written exam for the um, CNA. People usually get um, run into trouble with the skills exam because that's where they like, because with the skills you have to take step by step, you have to do it step by step, and that's where they usually dock points off you. Um, but later on in the slide, I'll show you guys where like you can see the steps yeah, so you can study it um, once you're ready to um, take the exam. Actually, here it is. So um, if you go into the uh, American Red Cross, just go. American Red Cross, um, you'll see this page, and then up top, you'll see training and certifications. You'll press CNA and testing, right there. And once that, once you press that, it will get to this page. You'll just press California, you press that, and you'll see these two um, things right there. Um, one of them explains what are gonna be in the exam, how are the tables uh, broken down. Uh, the first table, and then the second one, this one right here explains the step-by-step -step, um, skills, what you need to do for each skills. So, um, okay, so this is like what's in that doc, document. Um, if you see up top, these are the, um, so these are the um, 
These are the uh, stations that you'll be tested on. The first one is always going to be hand washing. Um, as nurses, we all, know, we all know that's very important for us to do. Um, so hand washing, second one's going to be personal care, third one's vital signs, and then the fourth one's going to be repositioning. Um, and in here, it will tell you specifically which skill it is. Um, these are all the lists. There's only there's 25 skills in the exam, and all of this is in that dog, the step-by-step -step specific instructions on how to do it. So um, if you want to, once you're ready later on, just check that document out, and you'll see the instructions. Yeah, so if you guys are curious which one I failed, I failed the side laying position. Um, I didn't put pill between the legs, and that was like a huge thing. So there's like little things that they look for. I also almost failed hand washing, believe it or not. <laughs> and I almost failed um, height measurement with those old school things. So, I mean, I don't think I'm a bad nursing student or anything, but it just gives an idea of how picky they can be. I did feel like a really bad one in the moment. <laughs> but but this is all the skills, all, fifth, all 25, sorry. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> what did you say? Um, so then what you do is you come up to like the instructor and then they have just cards and then you pick a random one and that's a skill that you're going to be demonstrating. So you got to kind of know all of the ones you see here. The question oh, answered. Oh, okay. okay. All right. All right. That's basically it. Now let's get to questions. I, guess I, I would say questions. one thing though. If there's one thing that I totally regretted during my four years of nursing school is really get the CNA. Because there's, I've heard so many students and I'm telling this to young underclassmen, there's so many students' stories I've heard that they've like worked at a CNA after sophomore two, and when they actually graduated as an RN, they got hired internally. That's a huge, like, big, a huge benefit for being CNA. And I totally, <laughs> <It's> true. <laughs> I totally um, encourage everyone to do this, if obviously you have the time and everything, but. Good money. Good money. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind. I get paid twenty six. That's I don't. And honestly, I don't really care about the money. Like what matters to me right now is getting my experience, getting my foot in the door. Because at the end of the day, that's like what I want. You know, getting get to know the managers and yeah. getting hired at LP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's just a transfer, right? It's not like you're. Um. I know Packard. It's like yeah. It's not a unit. Yeah, it's not an official, but like the thing is, like you, I, I get, I know, like the hiring manager. Um, you saw the video. Um, mm -hmm. You went to the, um, uh, the, the Hacker, uh, you saw Mason. Yeah. He's my direct manager. I'm like, <laughs> oh, I know that guy. <laughs> so like, you'll get to know people actually that who's in the hospital who hires her nurses. So, yeah, and if, yes. Um, Are there any CEs for this or? Is it like you have to reapply every two years or anything? Or yes, um, I believe it's forty-eight. So. Yeah, I believe it's forty-eight hours. I've had it for. F yeah, I had to renew mine actually. Um, you guys won't have to renew it because you guys are only going to be you all will be graduating in two years. But um, it's 40, 48 hours of CEU education. Twelve half of it you can take online, but you have you can only take twelve. Um, in one year. So for the online part, the online part you have to take in one year, and then the other part you have to take the tw so twelve and twelve, and then the other twenty four because it's um, forty eight you have to take an in class CEU. Um, yep. Yeah, in the job that I got, they haven't mentioned any of that, so <laughs> I'm not sure for me. But yeah. How do you balance like being a CNA as well as being Student. Like, uh, is it just like work no. again? Is it just like work again, or just? I'll answer that. Um, yeah. Uh, or so. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I always like. Okay. So like me, how I balance it is I got initially I got the position that would that would, the um the position position that would the time that would work for me. Um. So like when they when you look for an uh, for a job, they will ask. Um. You will look at the application. It would say point one, point six. 0.001. I'm a 0.001. My requirement to work for this hospital is twice per month, and that's that's it. That's all they require me. It's actually amazing. And on top of that, whenever I want to work, I just call them maybe two hours ahead, 
and I tell them, hey, do you guys have any shifts? And ever since I got hired, I've always gotten like sh shifts because they have agencies that they work. They they have like agency workers that they get from other uh, agencies, and then they have their core employees. They prioritize us. So whenever I need shifts, I just call them. But yeah, priority. Um, my requirements twice per month, and I just work whenever I want. And also, um, sometimes I need money. And what I do is I, I work 16 hours. I know it's crazy. But uh, it pays for everything I need, bills, and yeah. I work 16 <laughs> sometimes. Like most, of the, most Saturdays, I work 16, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's a lot of jobs that are like different. Um, the hours are different, so Jan is point zero zero one. The job I got is point six, um, so that means three shifts a week. It's gonna be interesting. Um, but there's different ones. There's per diem like point one, so that's maybe like four times a month or so, and then it's easy to pick up shifts, like he said. So there's different jobs that you'll apply to, and it explicitly says how much you'll be working. Question: So do those hours go up once you get hired as a nurse? in that unit, so, or if you get hired as a nurse at that hospital, do they bump up those hours? Um, yeah, it just depends on what you apply, what kind of position you apply uh, for, because there's going to be full-time, there's going to be point eight. it really all depends um, on what your actual, like, position is. And does that, does that, like, work towards your, like, seniority? Actually, yeah, that's, like, one more thing that actually great for me, with me right now, I've been working for them for three years. Uh, actually, no, I started as an agency. I worked with, with an agency for three years with, in Packard. And I just got hired directly last January, ever since they opened the, host, the hospital. So now that I'm hired directly, my seniority actually goes, um, extends when I get hired as a nurse. That means when I make schedules later on, I'll get priority. Uh, whenever I want vacations, I'll get those vacations, I get those holidays, I get to go to Hawaii, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, that's what it means. Um, or not just that, or just like, if I want to take shifts, I don't know exactly how it works, because I'm not, I'm not a nurse yet. Um, but, um, yeah, we just get, like, priority, because, like, we've we'll been there longer. Yeah, so it rolls over <coughs> when you become a nurse in the same hospital. Just to clarify, um, if you do end up getting a job in a hospital in the department you want as a CNA, it isn't like a full guarantee that you'll get a job there as a nurse. Um, as a personal example, I got a job in the ICU, and they have like really strict new grad programs, so I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get a job as an ICU new grad, which is totally okay with me. So just go into that knowing that you might not get a job there, that sometimes they have different procedures for new grads. Sometimes they want them to like start in med surge or all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's no guarantees, but having the certificate or like CNA being in there, or just like not even working, just having the certificate in your resume really helps. It really shows the hiring managers like, wow, this person really likes, he's really serious about nursing. He did the schooling, he did the examination, and it just gives you a bump up compared to everyone else. And that's like, that's really what you want when you're like, when you're applying for jobs. You just want something that will make you better. That's why people do internships. That's why people do great. Some people do well in their grades. I'm different. I think hard work <laughs> and dedication shows more. But you know, it's 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 it's, it's all different. Um, it's also um, it's not very easy getting a job in the hospital. It's actually really hard. But the good thing about us is we have experience in other hospitals, so we can put that in our resume. So we have acute experience. That's what some other CNAs that's fighting for that job doesn't have the acute experience. When I got hired at Loso Packard, I had to take uh, another CNA acute certificate, and I trained into El Camino Hospital, and that's why I got the position in the agency. Um, but yeah, just do that. Um, and agencies are also like one way in getting in, and one way to get into the hospital. What happens is they take 30% of your pay, <coughs> but what happens is they they connect you to the hospital, they assign you there. Um, but yeah, and they also have, I know if you guys wanna know some agencies, you can talk to me later. I know three, and they send people at UCSF, St. Francis, um, or if you live in the Bay, in, in the East Bay, Highland. Um, 
Yeah. Yes. How long did the process of like applying to the certificate and like taking the exam take? Uh, the CMA. Yeah. Um, do you I think it took maybe like almost two months, I'd say, um, especially since I failed my skills test the first time, that kind of prolonged it three more weeks. So I'd say like a month and a half for sure, for all of it. So if you fail one of the tables for skills, you fail all four of them, or you just redo that one? Yes, one so you fail like the entire skills test. Gotcha. Um, you do have to retake it, and then just like the first time, you pick a random card, so you could end up picking the same one or different one. <laughs> Yeah, but you don't have to retake both if you fail one. So if you fail skills, you only have to do skills. Yeah. How many tries do you have? Three, <laughs> three tries. <laughs> Is it three, three tries, and then do you have to pay again? Yeah, you do. It's expensive. So How much study. is it? Um, I think I paid like maybe 90 bucks for the first one, and then 60 bucks for the retake. But the good thing about us is we don't have to go to a CNA school. CNA schools usually cost up to six, 600 to like $1,000. Um, our tuition, our, well, our education covered that part, at least. So that's like the good thing about it. Yeah. So I would definitely take advantage of it. We already have the education. You just have to turn in your transcript and do the exam. This summer, coming up summer, you may not have any plans. That's like one thing you can put in your agenda. It's really, really, I highly recommend it. This is why I really push for this event, because it's really, I'm pretty, I'm not that stressed out about getting a job later on. Um, Shut up. I'm gonna be honest, man. I'm not, I'm, yo, no, no, I'm just, I'm just telling you guys. No. I'm just saying that that's like, that's what I feel about my condition right now. This is why you guys need to come out to events. Yeah. Yeah. Like this one. Yeah. If you guys have any questions, I'll be on campus or Facebook me or whatever. Lead on when you get your when you get your when you finish uh, sophomore too. Um, Abby here too, because she just took the exam recently. Um, yeah. Any more questions? Yes. I'm a junior too. Do you think it's too late for me to become a CNA? Never. No. <laughs> Unless you're a nurse. But never. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would definitely do it. Um, yeah. I will say. I will say. Like through like my experience of like um, talking to my predecessors from MSNS and other people I know, um, finding jobs specifically in the Bay Area as an actual RN it's pretty difficult. And um, you know, like I tell this to everyone in college that you want to like have really good grades. You know, you, you want to get honors and everything, but honestly, getting a job sometimes comes down to who do you actually know, because I know a lot of people got a job because um, they know someone and they hook them up, you know what I mean? Um, and so I say, you know, Jan ain't stressing out about this, like really, like, I, and I know some people who even graduated from USF um, BSN program, and they could not find a job as an RM whatsoever. So they actually ended up working at a CNA first for like several months to a year or two. And then they finally got hired as an actual RM. I'm not saying that's gonna happen to everyone, but it does happen, unfortunately. Um, that's because finding a job in the Bay Area is pretty hard. Um, I'd say other parts of the United States, finding a job as an RM, it's a lot easier to say. It's not gonna make as much money. For sure, you guys, you guys know barrier nurses make like the most. the most out of anywhere else in the entire world. Like I heard, st I've been hearing starting salaries as like I don't know from fifty five to sixty, seventy to eighty dollars in the barrier. But I, re I I remember I was looking at new grad program over like different states and there it is like thirty five dollars or less. Or less. It's crazy, isn't it? Um, but definitely, if you are a senior, you have the connections of meeting with the um, uh, hiring manager and you put your name in, the, in, their, in their head and that's like one of the best ways to get hired, so. Just having it on your resume is super valuable because mm -hmm. you're pretty much working with nurses like your entire time as a CNA. So, I mean, once you're looking for a nurse job, it's really valuable. Yeah, and uh, another thing, besides getting a job and getting all of that like connected, 
for me, being a CNA taught me all the practical skills that I learned, and I feel more confident when I started my clinical um, compared to like other people who have never had experience. And as a CNA, I just get to learn all this like practical knowledge that like I never would have learned, like how to change someone and not spilling it, you know, like changing diapers and like and like um, what else, like. Um, checking blood pressure, why their blood pressure is going to be usually lower when they're like turned. I never learned that in nursing school. Like I knew it before, but like I never learned that in nursing school. Um, and yeah, and like as a CNA, you get to learn all the skills and you can actually use those skills later on if you want to work in an ICU unit, which most people do. Um, in an ICU unit, you usually work by yourself. You don't have CNAs. Um, you work by yourself and if you have that CNA skills with you, um, it's actually really helpful because that can make your job easier and all you don't have to worry about is like the other nursing part, the more advanced nursing part, nursing part, you know. And, yeah, and you see, being a CNA is like, you get to like connect with your patient differently too. We're like more on the side of the patient. We're like, we're the one that was always there. We changed them. We're the one who talks to them. We have more time to talk to them. And yeah, and that's what I really like about nurse, uh, being a CNA. Um, it's just you just get this like feeling inside that you're actually like doing something. I'm sure I'll feel that way on as a nurse, but like I felt that. This, that's like one of, one of the reasons why I wanted to be like a nurse more now. Just with that feeling. I got it from the CNA when I was working as a CNA. Yeah. So one more thing I want to say, um, we were just talking about how competitive getting an RN job is. I feel like a CNA job nowadays is competitive as well. So my recommendation to anyone who is really serious about working as a CNA, start talking to managers right now. Just come up to them and be like, oh, I'm interested in applying here as a CNA, and just get to know people now and get yourself out there. So that when you do apply, they'll be like, oh, this person actually took the time to come in and talk to me. So, because there's a lot of competition as well. I applied a lot, and I only heard back from one place where I got the job, so. So it's good to just do something extra, just take an extra step, get yourself out there. Okay. All right, thank you guys for coming. If you guys have any other questions, you can ask them personally. But also, other than that, uh, also yeah. one more thing, like you know, like EMT, CNA, and Rock Med, they have so many benefits that we just explained. But also, you have to kind of like first and foremost think about who you are the individual because some people might not be suited for EMT or CNA or rock med. So figure out who you are as an individual and what works best works for yourself and then um, you know, do your do your research. You know, you have excellent resources on campus. Um, this is why we held this event in the first place. So really if you have to have any burning questions like feel free to like ask, ask, ask. But we are more than open to like helping you guys out individually. So figure it out and a lot of benefits. So awesome. All right. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs>